Saudi Arabia, the Middle East on vision and how AI is part of that vision. The people who I remembered were the people who had the best energy and the people who I don't really remember, I felt drained. They become little subclusters in there. In these clusters, we can... That's that's like... It's about the white data. This is the white data. data. I know. But coming here, I've never met more of a welcoming population. I mean, I can already tell when somebody's marching over to me the, the aggressive pitch I'm about to receive. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This is vlog three and I'm off to Saudi. So I'm quite excited about going to Saudi Arabia. I've never been before. A lot of people may be surprised about that given that it is the neighboring country. I mean, if I lived in England, or well, I used to, you know, France is our neighbor. I went to France many of times. But yeah, first time going to Saudi Arabia, very, very excited. It's gonna be a busy week. I mean, Leap have done a tremendous job in advertising uh, this summit. Uh, there's lots of amazing international figures, business folk, investors, startups, you name it. And everybody knows if you stick in to Google, Saudi Arabia is spending a lot of money, not just on buying Ronaldo, but on technologies, infrastructure, hiring talent from around the world. So exciting, exciting, exciting. I cannot wait to go. So I'm gonna take you through the next five days, my first ever trip to Saudi Arabia. You're gonna come with me, but I'm gonna show you as much as what I experienced. So yeah, ready to go. I'm here with my lovely Uber driver, Arslan. I'm off to Riyadh, as before, my first time ever to Saudi Arabia. We're just getting out of downtown Dubai traffic. And as you can see, we've got very busy outside. We're traveling in a Tesla, so we're saving the world, lowering our admissions on the way to Saudi Arabia already, which is very important. But very much looking forward to the trip ahead, and I'll keep you posted. I'm about 20 minutes in the airport now but ahead of schedule. God, it's 10 a.m. I finished everything this morning. I haven't even got to the, 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 the Leap Summit yet. Yeah. Um, I need to make my own. Uh, I'm probably not going to take my camera with me for the first day. I'll take it tomorrow for the second day because today is going to be madness. I'm going to see a lot of people. I, I need to think about what content I'm going to create, which is valuable to obviously you guys who are watching. So today is going to be more just learn what it looks like, learn everything. And then tomorrow I'll deliver the content. But I was just on with my dad. My dad is literally my biggest idol when it comes to advice uh, about my presentation on Wednesday. He's so clever. He was asking chat GPT uh, loads of stuff while we were talking. So he's up first thing in the morning in England. And yeah, I'm just getting advice because we're going to change my presentation. Before I was going to talk more around reskilling humans, but now I'm going to talk a little bit more about Saudi Arabia, the Middle East on vision and how AI is part of that vision. So start of the second day at Leap Summit, I'm actually going to do most of my recording tomorrow because I'm speaking, which is going to kind of be the day where I just get my camera out, put everyone in front of it, put them on the spot, do loads of networking. So I look forward to that. But the last few days, I've been thinking about trying to produce content. But at the end of the day, I've also got to focus on work, meet people, exchange business cards. I went out for, I went out with the, uh, Saudi angels last night, which was pretty amazing. Um, a lot of amazing female entrepreneurs as part of that group. And a little, I guess after yesterday, so much networking. I mean, I have, I think I counted like 72 business cards on day one and today's probably gonna be worse, but networking. I guess people are good at it, people are bad. I don't think anybody's amazing at it. 
I mean, networking is something where you build confidence. You get better by going to more events. You get more confident about talking about your business. I guess if it becomes more successful over time, you're more proud to talk about it because you have more to talk about. You know, when you talk to somebody and it's like they have this, when looking at networking, I mean, when you speak to so many people, it's so hard to remember the conversation that you had, but there's certain people that you remember. And I think the key to networking is, I'm sure all of you have had a conversation where afterwards you're like, I feel so drained. They've drained the life out of me. But then I meet some people where they're like, I feel so energized. And they've kind of given me this positive energy, which I've taken back thought about. And they're the types of people I want to continue the conversation with and hang around. So for a lot of you out there wanting to network, to be honest, it doesn't matter if you're talking nonsense or if you're not that intellectual or you're, you think you may not be clever enough. To be honest, it's all about the energy because looking back at day one yesterday, the people who I remembered were the people who had the best energy and the people who I don't really remember, I felt drained. I mean, they were talking and talking and talking and talking and it was just little words coming out of their mouth. Blah, 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 blah. And they're lovely people. I have nothing against, I'm not judging anyone here. Lovely, lovely people, everyone. But it's just, I think, a word of advice for even myself to, I thought about yesterday. The people who were kind of, who brought positive energy and who were energized when they were talking to me, I remembered them. But I remember so many conversations where I was a bit drained and just like, oh, where can I go and get a cup of coffee in a nice way? But again, nothing against them. It's just how you present yourself. So think, I think, think more about your, your, your energy rather than what you're saying. It means a lot. Right, so today's the day. Presentation day. Day three of Leap. I'm ready to go. Well, as you know, that's a complete lie. I'm not ready to go. I'm very nervous about talking. I'm still sitting since the last hour and a half doing my presentation, changing things. Can't make my mind up. I'm about to head down for breakfast. They've got a lovely... All right. <laughs> I've eaten pancakes and strawberries the last two days every morning. Coffee, pancakes and strawberries, which is not very healthy at all. And with loads of syrup on them. Yes, yeah, so so yeah, I didn't show you day one and day two. And the reason for that was yeah, I had work to do. I wanted to network with people. I didn't want to stand around with a camera in my face, annoying people. So today's the day you're going to come with me to Leap Summit. And I'm going to show you everything. I'm speaking at 3 p.m. I'm very, very nervous. I've never done this style of talk. It's kind of like a TED talk. The stage is a lot bigger than I thought. I thought I was on like some, I'm not on a panel. I'm not doing anything. So it's literally on me. It's a keynote, which is quite scary. Anyway, on we go. I'll go down for breakfast and I'll come back, get changed, do a bit more of my presentation, send it across to the team. And then we're off to the summit and you guys can come with me for the whole journey. So I'm quite excited to share the full day with you. I will speak to you in a bit. So it's happening. I'm leaving the hotel room off to leap and you're coming with me. Uh, oh God. Oh yeah, I've got my key pass. <laughs> leaving the hotel room without your key pass. Standard schoolboy error. It's too misty to show you uh, downtown Riyadh, but it's funny Saudi Arabia because it's like old, but then there's pop-ups of like Dubai everywhere. So it's very bright outside, but walking into Leap now and what people don't realize, I mean, this is, this country's still being built. So public transportation is not here yet. <laughs> there's no trains, no bus services, other types of things. So how's it going? You all right? Yeah, that's good. Just had a, you doing your own vlog, are you? Or uh, stuff, yeah, I document really the trip because so many people I mean I live in the UAE so many people want to know more about Saudi and it's just like the perfect example they don't realize how it's still being built yeah it's like UAE 20 years ago right it's 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 it's, de it's weird because it it sounds developed but it's underdeveloped yeah and so the chap who was in the uh, the recap with me just now he said uh, he was shocked So it's all going on in Leap. It is so busy. I don't even sit behind me. I'm in a big startup tent. We've got an investor stage over here. Um, I'm on a bigger stage, literally to the left. 
I was still very nervous and kind of would have go over there in about an hour. But it's weird for me, so many people are bumping into me, talking to me, oh, I've seen you on LinkedIn, which is very weird. It's brilliant and I thank everybody for the, uh, the attention. Um, but I was telling them it's, it's quite inefficient. I feel sorry, so many people are like, oh, you haven't accepted me or you haven't done this. But anyway, being stopped and say, people saying hello and thank you is always nice. But Saudi, I tell you what, this place, okay, as I mentioned before, they don't have the infrastructure, roads, trains yet. But in terms of tech, found out that the old ruler did a huge delegation where he would send all the young Saudi nationals over to America, fund their whole four years of university, some of the top universities. And from there, they all came back, created this trend of going to be well-educated in some of these really amazing skills. So I'm very impressed with the, the, the local knowledge about how far they are in tech. Okay, it's the desert and they're, they're still building their country, but in terms of tech, it's unbelievable. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna do in Saudi. My home and my um, playground in a nice way is Abu Dhabi. <laughs> I don't think, uh, I'm not that type of guy who uh, will run around and try different locations and try to be an expert everywhere. It's good because it allows me to see startups here, what's being built here, who are the local players, conglomerates, corporates. Uh, I'm sure from being from Abu Dhabi, I'll, I'll be able to do a lot more with Saudi Arabia. And for all of you out there, it's worth a trip. Now, as I said, you, you've, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. It's, it's not like a developed market, but I've never met more humble people that are so welcoming and they're so proud of their country, so happy. I had a female Uber driver the other day who was just smiling. So it's, yeah, really, really amazing place. Think of the opportunity here. They're still trying to build their country, so they need us. They need all of us to, 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 to help them. And they're willing to listen, listen to the westernized, developed countries. Anyway, moving on, I will, um, my talk's very soon. I am so nervous. <laughs>
Abdullah Canoe, which is a very large Bahrain, Bahraini family. We were talking about the next generation of children, really kind of based actually on my uh, talk today, talking about the next generation of kids, the effect of artificial intelligence, how chat, GBT, things like this are going to be quite effective uh, for cultures such as you know countries like this. All of our skills we've learned at university may become irrelevant in the next two years as we need all need new skills because technology is moving faster than ever before. So yeah, no, what a chat. Lovely guy. Hamid Abdullah Kanu. Got his I'll cover up his personal details, but amazing guy. Anyway, I'm off to bed, been a long day. Got some good feedback from the uh my presentation today in the end, but still I don't think I didn't like it as much as I wanted to. I'm annoyed, a bit annoyed myself. One more day at Leap Summit. One more day and then fly back Friday. But been a great week. What an event. And again, Saudi Arabia. We're now coming to the end of the trip in Saudi Arabia. I'm just looking out at Saudi Arabia and trying to think, was it what I expected? I don't know, really. To be honest, I met some quality people. I was just talking. I'm going to write a LinkedIn post tonight about uh, meeting the, the family principal of Canoe last night and spending five hours with him chatting about the future of this place and how some of his stories about how his upbringing, he was talking about how he was a young boy and his dad used to make him come into the office and pour coffee for all the executives in the office just to do his chores and be part of the business. But, you know, he's obviously too young to be involved with the conversation. So no, really good stories. But I think in summary, let's summarise this Saudi trip. Opportunity is obvious. Of course, yes, we don't have the infrastructure here in Saudi Arabia yet. They need more roads, public transportation, other types of things. But it's very obvious that they're an open book. Of course, no, you know, we're not going to be riding around scooters because the country's not built yet. Do we need help in renewable energy? Absolutely. Do we need help in financial technologies? Of course. Medical technologies, agriculture. So there's so many different industries. For all of you looking in, what can you bring to the table? For a country that needs your help, why does everybody come here asking for money? Does it make them selfish if they don't give you money? No, not really, no. Because they want to grow their own country. Is it selfish that you're not in a position to move your life here? No, not really. So we don't know the answer, but the way to conclude it is the fact that the country needs your help in many different ways to help it diversify away from an oil income to now artificial intelligence, big data, distributed ledger, cybersecurity, you name it. But a lot of people this week, well, I, said, I said it last night, but it's, again, it's fair enough. I would, I'm in, I would be in the same position, like two young boys actually from Bahrain. They set up a similar business, business to HelloFresh in the UK where they send you a, you know, a meal plan for the week. Uh, they do your height, your weight, and they send you enough food to, to give you a healthy lifestyle, but it's very balanced on your data. Now, after they found out that we don't invest in their industry, uh, not just me, but Canoe, uh, Vinay, who invests in Africa, uh, even have a gentleman from Oman who invests purely in the US. He's part of the Sovereign Wealth Fund there. Like good quality people, actually, this week. Really good quality. Once these boys... I didn't get the answer they wanted. I've never seen them disappear so fast. Now, I get it. If I'm a hustling startup, I need to maximise my time here. Fully understand it. But also, it was a little bit obvious the way they just ran off. You know, they, 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 when they didn't get what they wanted, they're off. My attitude is, and a bit of advice for them was, if my company's struggling, it doesn't matter who you are, you need as many friends as possible. And to, you had some fairly decent people around me to kind of, shut them down quite fast and not spend that little extra but again i get it they're there they, they you know they're there for a goal they're young guys they want to maximize their opportunity being saudi because they can't afford to just fly around the world it's a tough game tough game anyway i'm gonna chill out now probably walk around the shopping mall um got some birthdays coming up so we'll buy some presents uh i'm tired i'm knackered i still haven't seen avatar yet i really want to go and watch it but saudi cinemas are only still being built i know it's surprising for all of you in the west Yes, cinemas are only just a thing here. Um, but yeah, probably early night and my flight's at 9.20 tomorrow morning back to Dubai. And then it's the weekend. And then we go again. But I hope you've enjoyed the uh, 
the trip. I Hopefully this vlog is helping you understand a little bit what it's like on the road, what it's like to be an entrepreneur. In a few weeks, I'm starting one of my own businesses, which is going to be starting from the bottom. No clients, no nothing, an empty shell, and I've got to build it from the ground up. So I know what it's like. Thanks for listening. On to vlog four. Chat soon.